about a year ago that I was taking care of a patient in our same day clinic. He was uh, in his late 30s, otherwise generally pretty healthy, said he had some blood in his stool. And I told him, oh, it's probably just some hemorrhoids, no big deal. He further told me, well, I've also lost a good 10 pounds of weight in the past year. And I thought, well, that's more concerning. I want to do some basic tests here, but I'm going to want you to see our GI, our stomach specialist, so they can do a colonoscopy just to be thorough in our evaluation. Um, so he proceeds to go ahead and do that, but um, ultimately isn't able to get an appointment for three months. Finally does get that, gets his colonoscopy done to find that he has stage 3 colon cancer and been sitting on it for months this whole time. Just bad on so many levels. Another patient I saw not long after that, a young woman said her heart was racing and she thinks she has this history of some kind of hormone problem. I did my initial evaluation test and found, aha, just as I suspected, you have a thyroid problem. You should go see our hormone specialist. They'll take good care of you. They'll diagnose the complete process and initiate treatment. Uh, she tries to do this and they tell her next available appointment will be three months from now. And I've been thinking, this is crazy. My patient can't wait that long for appropriate diagnosis and treatment. So what did I do? What could I do? I kind of hacked it together. I read some notes and did some reading online and realized it's really just a handful of medication lab tests is what she needs. Um, and although I'm not used to doing that because I don't see those kinds of cases that often, those are things I could do if I just had the right kind of support and information to do so. What this really speaks to though, I mean, these are commercially insured patients um, in a tertiary care medical setting and even there, how difficult it is to access the most important healthcare resource. The scarcest healthcare resource is access to a competent human professional. Let alone, let's not talk about the tens of millions in the US alone, let alone hundreds of millions worldwide who have deficient access to medical specialty care. Imagine you're living in a rural area, you can't even find a doctor for 100 miles um, to take care of the needs you have. Thinking about the broader themes of this session about limitations and what can be unlimited. This is a real challenge in healthcare. If you understand healthcare reform, all the drama, all the debate, it's because of this fundamental tension in the iron triangle of cost, quality, and access. If you want more people to have access to healthcare, that's great, but it's gonna cost a lot more then. If you don't have the budget to spend more, well then you have to limit some of the servers you offer. You don't want any limitations, well then how can we get it to everybody? You, anytime you try to help by pulling in one direction of one of these ends of the iron triangle, just be aware that you have almost certainly broken something on the other side. And the thing is, it has to be this way because healthcare is fundamentally a scarce resource. In particular, the most important scarce resource is access to a competent human expert. Right, I'm trying to see 20 patients a day I would really like to see a lot more because I want more people to have access to care, but eventually it just becomes not physically possible for me to see any more patients in the hospital. Or if I did, it becomes unsafe because I clearly can't provide adequate attention to them anymore with such a limited time frame. You know, it's unlike, say, even a medicine or a device. You can manufacture, you can build more devices, but you cannot manufacture experts in that same way. So what can we do about it? What this is quickly turns into is a political dogfight, right? If we're all squabbling over which slice of a, of a pie that we are going to get, if you're going to get more, does that mean I get less? Well, I want more, then you're going to get less. And realizing that we are all squabbling over which slice of a shrinking pie that we're going to get, because overall, the escalating costs of healthcare are really compromising the access for everyone. So either we have dogfights over that, or the optimistic approach that I would like to take is there's really basically only two approaches you can break out of this cycle. One is that you systematically identify and eliminate um, sources of inefficiencies like fraud, waste, and abuse. Otherwise, what I'm hopeful for, hopeful for is can we create supply, more automation, especially using computational systems that will allow us to reach more people even within the constrained set of resources that we already have. So what does this mean? Does this mean um, uh, we, we should, I, I'm trying to build AI systems to replace doctors or something like this? You know, Warner Slack has a very um, famous quote that any doctor that can be replaced by a computer should be replaced by a computer. The ironic thing is, I think many people misinterpret 
this quote and maybe misinterpreting the line of discussion I'm de describing as in, I think we should replace humans with computers. The point of this commentary is actually to make the point that a good human cannot be replaced by a computer. The kind of function, the kind of values, the kind of reasoning, the kind of perception, the kind of empathy we can provide, really you cannot replace that with a computer. And yet there still are substantial opportunities we can do to overall improve our health for ourselves and for everyone. Consider that the current state of medicine and standard of practice is marked by profound, undesirable clinical practice variability. If you have one person with one disease and you showed up at 10 different hospitals, you could very easily end up with 10 different courses of treatment. And that's gonna compromise both the quality and the efficiency of our healthcare. And to be fair, a lot of that variability is actually due to uncertainty. It's a dirty little secret about evidence-based medicine. For the vast majority of medical decisions we make, there is no good evidence to tell us exactly what to do. And so when you consider that even if we had all the answers to everything, when there are over 75 randomized control trials and 11 systematic reviews published in the medical literature every single day, I don't know about everybody else, but I am way behind in terms of keeping up with the literature. We are clearly well past the point where the complexity of modern medicine exceeds the capacity of the unaided expert mind, a quote attributed to David Eddy. So with that in mind then, well, what are we supposed to do about that? Again, not to undermine the value and importance of human expertise, which is quite powerful and can be quite effective. The challenge with that is that it is extremely difficult to reproduce which means that it is essentially impossible to deliver it at scale consistently without some kind of support system. Which to me means you've got to integrate computational information systems. There is no other credible approach for which we can address and manage the escalating complexity of medical um, healthcare under the modern era.